Hello, uh, this is John with FirePro, and this video is going to be about um, basically uh, designing a system according to uh, the requirements, the, the basic requirements of uh, NFPA 72. Um, it's going to be chapter, the documents uh, chapter, which I believe is chapter 7. And um, if you don't know, you can get all the codes online for free. Uh, on their website if you just log in uh, register on their website then you can log in um, and, and then here's their codes and standards and you can scroll through and pick so I've already got this pulled up actually and here's an FPA 72 uh, it's the newest edition uh, 2019 and uh, this is what it looks like if you don't know it's their uh, e-version and like I said it's free so we're gonna go to chapter 7 documentation and I uh, right here we've got the Whoops. Right here we've got the minimum requirements. And the, these are what I go by basically. Um, it's like the minimum requirements for designing a fire alarm system. So, and I think it goes to 11 or 12 is kind of where it tops off. As far as basic submittal, um, there's some other stuff in here uh, where it talks about as built and things like that. That comes afterwards, you know, towards, towards the end of the project. So this is going to be uh, covering just uh, for your submit your initial fire alarm submittal to the HJ to get your drawings approved. That's what this is going to cover. Uh, it's not going to be in depth. It's just going to show. Um, I'm going to read through the list here, and then I'm going to show you a basic drawing, one that we've done, and I'm going to show you uh, the parts on that drawing so you can see for yourself. Uh, and, and give yourself a good example. So this video is going to be uh, good for somebody who is not familiar with design, but maybe wanting to get into it. Uh, any, any designer, anybody in plan review, and I'll also kind of show you some things that I look for uh, when I do uh, plan review also for like um, AHJ requiring an ISAP 4 uh, stamp on the drawings. Uh, at FirePro, we also provide the review, that, that third-party review, uh, and then the nice set signature, signature on those as well. So, like I said, I'll kind of show you what I look for when I do my reviews. Um, but let's get into it. So, again, this is Chapter 7, uh, which is Documentation Chapter of the 2019 NFPA 72. Um, and the first one here on the list, it says uh, a written narrative providing intent and system description. I've written out or typed out an, an actual separate narrative, I think, twice that I can actually count. And I've been doing this design actually since uh, 2005, so almost 15 years now. Um, usually what this is in, in place of it is, um, I'll show you right here in the drawing is an actual scope of work okay and on this particular drawing here's the title block i've got this is a by the way this is a uh one of our, our voice evacuation systems that we've done it's it's a small building um but i'll show you on this particular title block where we've got our scope of work at and these blue this is for private information i've got that blocked out that's what that's what the purpose that's what these blue uh, marks are for but um, right here we've got our scope of work and again this is kind of the same thing as the narrative so this will work you know pretty much for any AHJ I've never got this kicked back uh, for having this on here but and, and it could be something simple just like this install a new voice evacuation system and monitor sprinkler system okay um, this is for a, a new install, obviously. For a tenant improvement, where you're adding notification devices, you might say something like, and we say this all the time, uh, add new notification devices in suite and tie into existing fire alarm system. Uh, if you're doing like a sprinkler monitoring system, you can say uh, install a new fire sprinkler monitoring system. So it doesn't have to be like, it can be detailed and you can go in depth and, and mention all your quantities and stuff like that. Um, but we like to keep it just as simple as possible. Um, we don't want to go above and beyond. and we, we definitely don't want to add anything uh, that might raise questions. And, and that's, that's part of one of the things that, uh, again, I do in my design and my reviews. 
um, and we'll kind of touch on that a little bit later too. But anyways, that's an example of scope of work or design narrative. So let's look at number two. We've got a riser diagram. A riser diagram, again, if you're not familiar with uh, design, your riser diagram is basically, it's a concise, um, it's just like a, a concise setup of all your devices that you, that you have here. Whatever order you have them in here is gonna be the same order on your riser diagram. Um, they're just gonna be a nice line going across instead of kind of staggered devices here and there. And I believe that was on, yeah, here we go. So here's our riser diagram for this particular one. And you might hear it called a one line diagram. Okay, and those, it's, it's the same thing though. And again, like I said, it's going to be the same sequence. Um, this one, and design styles vary. You might have everything all on one side here. Uh, for this particular one, we decided to do notification devices on this side. And then all of our initiating devices on this side. You know what I mean? That's pretty common too. And here's some of the basic stuff you're going to want to show on there. Uh, your two phone lines, so your communication method. If, you, if, you, if it's dial, dialing out phone lines or um, or if it has the, um, the radio dialer, uh, which is becoming more and more common. You're gonna wanna title it, obviously, Fire Alarm Riser Diagram, and it's not to scale, of course, um, but just to touch on here, again, this is voice evac, so we've got speaker strobe devices here, and you'll notice we've got the, you know, there, there's extra wire here, uh, once for the, the NAC, once for the speaker, and we've got the, let me see, our wire legend looks like it's on this page. Here we go. Wire legends over here. Sorry for the zoom, zooming in and out here. Uh, but you're you're definitely going to want to have this on here. I don't believe that this is on that list for NFPA 72 that we're going to go over. But you're going to need this on here. If you don't have it on here, nine times out of ten, it's going to be kicked back by your by your uh, AHJ, your plan reviewer. And it's just a basic wire diagram. You want to make sure this matches what you have on the riser. Uh, and then what you have here on the floor plan because you don't want like a solid line for your neck over here And then it's like a dotted line over here. It's gonna throw throw people off who's ever looking at it especially like if you have um, if you're subbing out uh, To to the electricians to, to run your wire and your conduit for you that, that's going to confuse them um, So again, you, you want to be precise uh, you, you don't wanna have to raise any questions um, But again going back to the riser diagram so we've got the, the two wires over here uh, for the NACs, because again, this is uh, voice evac. So we've got uh, one NAC, uh, one wire for the NAC, the other for the speaker. You'll see the device addresses on here, uh, the candelas for the devices. And then also because these are speakers, so we've got our wattage right there. And that's the, the number with the, the W next to it. Um, over here, we've got, again, our in initiating devices and it tells what those are. Um, here it looks like we have an enunciator on this one. You're going to want to show 120 volt by others, or it might say uh, dedicated 120 volts, something along those lines. Uh, but they're going to want to see that on there, probably nine times more more often than not, I should say. Um, and then this, you don't have to have this on here. This is just something what we like to do a lot of times, um, and it just makes it easier on the reviewer who's ever looking at the plans. Um, it's just like a nice little touch here where we can show. Uh, the actual room that the particular device is in. And that's pretty much it for the riser. And of course, the bigger your systems are, the bigger your riser is going to be. And the smaller your systems are, the smaller your riser is going to be. Uh, number three on the list, your floor plan layout, showing lo locations of all devices, control equipment, supervising station, shared communication equipment with each sheet, showing the following. So first of all, before we get into A, B, C, and D, let's pull up the floor plan. Oops. Here's our floor plan showing the layout of all the devices. Okay, and we can see our devices scattered here, um, spaced out appropriately. So let's get into A, B, C, and D. A point of compass showing the north arrow. 
this a lot of times can get you uh, your plans kicked back by by the HJ. They're going to want to see this right here. Your little directional arrow. Okay, they want to know what, what directions. Also, your scale. And I don't think scale was on the list, but we'll find out. Regardless if it's not, this is extremely important. They're going to want to see what, what your scale is on the drawing. 1 8 is very typical. Uh, that's probably what we use most of the time. 75, 80% of the time. You can do 3 30 seconds. Um, you can do one quarter if like if it's real small TI or something like that. You can do a quarter inch. Um, but basically, so this is that this is that north arrow they're talking about. B is going to be okay. So it is on here. The graphic representation of the scale used. And again, so we've got the scale on here. This one's one at one uh, one eighth equal, equals a foot. C is your room use identification. Obviously, they're going to want to know what rooms these devices are in. This one's a little light here on the PDF. Zoom in, you can see it a little better. So, like, we've got our lounge here, the bar, kitchen, because you're going to need to know where, the, where you're placing these devices at. You can't just put them anywhere, obviously. Okay, so the ASJ, your plan reviewer, is going to want to see where what these rooms are, too. So, they're going to want to know that proper coverage is in there. Okay. And D, building features that will alter, or excuse me, that will affect the placement of initiating devices and notification devices. So this one, I don't think we have any of that, but let's say that you've got, um, you're maybe in a building with like a warehouse or something or an atrium and it's got really high ceilings in it. Uh, you're gonna need to note the ceiling heights on that. That's where your sprinkler drawings, um, your sprinkler drawing uses the reflected ceiling plan and a lot of times you can get um, those plans from your sprinkler department if you're both uh, you and your sprinkler department is doing the same uh, the same project. So that comes in easy. Otherwise, request the reflected ceiling plan. And uh, that's where you'll see the, t the ceiling uh, tile layout, um, diffusers, lights. Well, diffusers, obviously, uh, also on the mechanical, but... Uh, your lights and things like that are going to be on it as well. And so you'll you'll know if you need to place anything uh, on the walls, ceilings, anything like that. Uh, if you're in an art gallery, there's probably going to be a lot of stuff on the walls. So you're not going to have much room on the walls to put your wall mounted devices. You know what I mean? So little things like that. Um, next on the list, number four, we've got a sequence of operation in either an input output matrix or narrative form. Um, I don't even know if I've seen narrative form for this, but here's what our sequence of operation looks like, and this is pretty typical. Oops, we've got it over here in the corner. Basically, it's your inputs and outputs. Um, so it's going to be all the devices in one in one uh, column or row. It's going to be all the devices used uh, in this drawing. So your smoke, duct detectors, if you got them, your pull station. Uh, if it's a sprinkler building, you're going to have your water flow and tamper, uh, obviously. And then we've got a kitchen hood in this one. So we've got a kitchen hood. And then what this, and then in the outputs, it's going to be, so if these, if these devices get triggered, what's going to happen on the system? Okay. And so that's what this is here. So it's exactly what it, what it is. It's an input output matrix. Okay. Sequence of operation. Uh, next on the list, we've got equipment technical data sheets. Now, those you don't actually copy and paste on the drawing, but they are required when you submit to your AHJ. And we're going to go and I'll show you what some look like if you don't know. Here we go, data sheets. They're all pretty typical. Obviously, uh, depending on the, the part that you're looking up or the device you're looking up, those are gonna differ and from the manufacturer, but the information on the actual sheets is what's the same. And let's pull up a orange stove or something. And system sensor is extremely common. Uh, it's really taking a long time. Here's here's one. System sensor is extremely common for notification devices. Extremely common. Let's just say this here. All right, so we'll pull this up. Here's a here's a data sheet. This is a ceiling mount device, and it's going to show you you know give you an idea what it looks like. 
Here's um, just kind of a brief summary. So it shows the candelas right here on this one. Uh, it's got your decibel rating right here. Here's some, you know, just general information about it. Um, this is nice. It tells you it's listed for ceiling mount only. Ceiling or wall mount. It's got your agency listings on here. So your HJ can know, yes, you're using legit parts. Um, here's also some good information right here. Your voltage range, uh, the wire gauge uh, it can go from, and the temperature. Here's a good one. Because if you're... Um, like if the building's in a, uh, like it's got different temperature environments or something like that. If you're, if you got like freezers that are like, you know, 20 degrees or, or even lower than that, you're going to need to know if you can put this device in here or not. This one, obviously you can't, you're going to need some weatherproof devices. Um, but here's basic table of information. So you got your strobe settings here. Here's just your horn here. And then here's your combination of your, of your horn strobe right here. And it's got your candela ratings. And then it tells your current draws right here. And these are, you're going to need to know for your voltage drop calculation, obviously. And I, most of the time, 99%, I'll do the temporal low. And then of course we, we're dealing with a 24, excuse me, 24 volt system. So you're going to, you're going to want to use this table right here. When you're doing your 24 volt system. And then uh, you can go down and get some more information. There's kind of some more detail what it looks like. Usually they'll provide this in CAD. It's very nice if they do. And you got an AHJ because a lot of AHJs are wanting, you're, they're wanting to see some CAD details, wiring and device details on your drawings. Uh, more and more AHJs I'm, I'm finding are wanting to see that. Um, so it's very nice when you've got a, uh, when you're using parts and they're uh, very friendly in, in giving that information out there. Otherwise, I mean, you do what you got to do. You can import the data sheet, you know, your PDF in there and work from it and all that. But, uh, and then down here, obviously, these are going to be your part, your model numbers that you're going to use. Okay. So that's your basic data sheet. You're going to need to provide these uh, for every device you use. So let me show you here. Here's the device symbol legend. Here's all the symbols used in the drawing. Here's all the quantities. Here's what they actually are. And here's the model numbers. Every device that you have on here, you're going to need to provide um, a data sheet for. So the main control panel, voice evac panel in this case, the enunciator, smoke detector, uh, duct detector. Now, if it's provided by the mechanical contractor, obviously you, you don't need to do that. And that's fine. Same thing with your uh, water flow and, and tamper. You're never going to have in your, in your kitchen hood either. You're not going to have model numbers for those because those aren't actual parts. We don't put those in. So your sprinkler con sprinkler contractor is going to do that. Um, but all this stuff here that actually has model numbers that are um, fire alarm parts, you're going to need the data sheet for. Um, and then if you're in California, you're going you're to need to do the CSFM sheets also. You're going to have to have another row, more than likely right here, another uh, column, excuse me, with your CSFM uh, listing numbers right here and you want to keep updated on those because they those change those sheets change every year the part numbers or the csfm um, listing numbers might not change uh, but the the date on the bottom of the sheet will change they change every year i think in june and so the ahjs are going to be they're going to be uh, looking for that and they'll they'll kick it back too if, if those are off but anyways here's a basic device legend obviously you're going to want to make sure this matches your quantities right here are going to want to match on your calculations, of course. Okay. And that's part of the things that, that I look for uh, when I do my review. I, I look for consistency because if you think about it, every time you make a change on your floor plan, you've got other places on your drawing. You're going to need to, you're going to make sure that need to make sure it matches. So if you change an address, a device, a candela or whatever, you're going to need to change the same thing on your riser. If you change the candela here, you're going to need to change the, make sure you update it on your voltage drop calc because sorry, here we go. You change your candela. What changes the current draw for your calc changes, right? So when you go up, this raises up, you're going to need to uh, show that on your, on your uh, calculation. Uh, so little things like that, um, device quantities. Now, a lot of times in your battery calc, you can do a, um, they'll show like a maximum, a maximum load on the calc. 
so like if you've got a fully loaded SLC loop or something, so you won't necessarily need to put the quantities in there, which is nice. I, I love it when that happens. It makes it makes it nice and easy. But regardless, um, the ARG, the HJ, the reviewer is probably going to count devices here and then count them on your riser diagram or something like that too. Uh, anyways, you, I mean, just being a good designer, you want to make sure your stuff's consistent and matches anyways, regardless if you think it's going to get caught and kicked back by, by anybody or not. Um, all right, so let's go back to next on the list here. Um, so we just covered the technical data sheets. Okay, so your manufactured published instructions, including operation and maintenance instructions. All right, so that's like your O&M stuff. That comes towards the end, okay? Um, so this isn't something that you necessarily need up front. Uh, maybe if you're working on like a military project, um, they might want to see something like that, but just your general uh, submittal to the AHJ and, and a city job that, you know, you'll probably never have to do that. I don't think I ever have. Um, all right, so number seven, your battery capacity and safety margin calculations where batteries are provided. So your battery calculation. So we've got a few calculations on here. We've got the voltage drop. We've got a battery calculation here for the main fire alarm control panel. We've got our wattage calculation for the speaker calc for, for our speakers. And then we've got another um, for this for the actual voice evac uh, panel battery calculation. Um, but this is what I was talking about. I think it's on here. These are Firelight. Um, what am I trying to do here? So it's got a spot for your quantities on here. Um, which is something I mentioned earlier. So like we got the enunciator, obviously this is going to be, it's, your, it's the panel itself. So it's going to have that defaulted in there. And if, again, if, if you're new to design or you haven't designed yet, I'm just going to kind of tell you what this is or how you get these. Most manufacturers for fire alarm will have these, their Excel spreadsheets and you can download them directly off the website. So it makes it really nice, really easy. Whenever there's they update or new panels come out, um, they will, um, usually put end up putting at some point at some point or another they'll put these on their website and you can download them again they're just excel spreadsheets you uh you open them up fill out the information you can copy and paste them right here on the drawing it makes it nice some people don't put them on their on their drawings like this uh, we work with some clients uh, where they, they just print them out on a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet so you can do either way uh, but again here's the spot for quantities and it looks like on this one, we went ahead and did, we, we did the quantities for the devices on here. Um, but here's also what I was talking about, what you don't, you don't have to do this because they made this really nice and they even put it right here. This is, we didn't add this in here. They have this in here. It says maximum long draw for all addressable devices. So, you know, at max, you're already looking at point, uh, 20,000 right there. And they automatically, it automatically just added it in there. So that's nice. So all you've got to do, here's one thing that you do want to look for when you download these is this will, I think pretty much always 24 hours. Um, sometimes I, I think it's an actual fire, firelight calc too. One of the panel calcs, they'll have this defaulted at 10 minutes instead of five or 15. Um, so you want to make sure you, you don't, you don't want to just download it, copy and paste the thing on here without paying attention. You definitely want to pay attention to what it's set at down here. Uh, this is voice evac, so of course it's at 15 minutes. If it was fire alarm, we'd have it at five minutes. Um, and then it just adds it up here for you, okay? So this is for the your voltage drop calculation. And I think that's actually next on the list. So let's, let's get into that. That way I don't get ahead of myself here. Yes, okay, so number eight is your voltage drop calculation. So we'll see how these kind of tie, in, tie into each other. Um, so we had two NAC circuits. We can see them right here. One, two. And here's, so for each NAC circuit, you should have a voltage drop calculation. We've got N1 and N2. We've got all our devices right here. You're going to want to make sure these match, obviously. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we've got, looks like eight devices on this one. 
and yes we've got eight devices on here and you can actually go through and match because your quant remember if you look at the data sheet it's going to tell you what the current draws are so here's your current draws here's your distance um these calculations that we use these are these are called point to point and uh that's the most precise type of voltage drop calculation um i've done when i first started doing the de design we used um lump sum which didn't have point to point per, uh, for each device what it did was it just kind of you added them all up and then you added your total wire length all together and it was just you know what it's called like a lump sum so it didn't have the individual uh wire uh distances between each device and i actually started getting there were a couple of ahjs that kicked kicked it back and they wanted to see the the point to point so and we like them i, I got used to them i mean it takes a little bit more time um but it is more precise and and so it makes it it makes it nice but basically here's a um and these are pretty pretty typical um see so you've probably seen similar um you just and you just this also is an excel spreadsheet okay um and you just go through your each device on here so you what i do is i'll match it up for the riser and i'll look at the i'll look at the candela you know what i mean and then i'll match it up with the data sheet and i'll know exactly what to put in right here then you can go on your drawing and um you can do a command to figure out what your uh the actual wire length in between your devices are and you just put them in here and as you put in these totals right here these numbers start changing right because it's an excel formula so it automatically takes it down and then you can tell what your end of line voltage is right here your percentage drop okay and then up here of course if you're using 12 gauge uh you can you can switch that here's your your minimum here's your starting voltage you want to do a 20 20.4 you don't want to do it at 24 just and say hey you know just because we're on a 24 volt system um and then here's here's your minimum you'll see this i think on the actual data sheet it tells you 16 is the minimum but when it's all said and done you've got all your devices on here it tells you your total we've got it up here a spot for the total also but anyways this is where this fits into the battery calculation because we see these totals right here 0 0.611 and 1.032 And here we are right here, NAC1, 0 0.611, NAC2, 1.032. Okay, so once it's all said and done, and you make sure that you've got your correct minutes on here, it's going to give you the amp hours you're, you're in the recommended battery. Okay, um, same thing over here. Again, this is the battery calculation for the, the actual voice evac panel. And it's the same thing, you know what I mean? basically looking at the same thing so you can do your quantities in there if you need to um, whatever other miscellaneous so we got our, we got our speaker speaker stuff in there too and then of course 15 minutes um, so that's it for voltage drop next on the list is your mounting height elevation for wall mounting devices and appliances this is a big one you always this is going to be something typical your company will end up having if it doesn't make one up and it's the actual mounting heights, typical mounting heights uh, and required mounting heights not to exceed uh, your minimum and maximum for each, de your, uh, each device on the system. So we've got our panel, pole station, and our wall mount horn strip. Okay, some of them might have an enunciator in there, but anyways, this is typical. You're going to want to have this on here. Next on the list... Where occupant notifi notifications require the minimum sound pressure levels that must be produced by the audible notification appliance in applicable covered areas. So, and for this one, we've got our, like I showed you earlier, our speaker wattages. But you can do different systems. If you're doing uh, military jobs, um, you might have the, well, not might. I mean, you're going to end up having to do the, the CIS, uh, your scores on here. Uh, and that's where they just take the meter and they go around in, in various areas uh, and they do the a weighted scale and then you mark your little you know whatever it might be 0.86 you know 0.85 over here or something like that uh, that's when the system's uh, an alarm um, number 11 location of alarm notification appliances including candela ratings for visual alarm okay so we kind of went over that earlier 
Next to each device, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you show your Candela rating. Okay, the AHJ is definitely gonna to wanna to see that because you're gonna to have to make sure that notification is visible from everywhere, all the common areas. Um, and there's tools that you can use. Most companies, most designers will make up their own as they're designing. Uh, so you've got the little scales in CAD uh, where you can measure out the device. Um, so like your your hallways, like the code says, is you're gonna want to, you're gonna have your 15s minimum, 15 in the corridors, um, and then as you space these out, you're gonna for the individual rooms, you're gonna know if you uh, if you're gonna need higher or not. So this one obviously we need to set 75. Uh, looks like we got some 75s, quite a bit to uh, save on uh, devices. They're not here. Yeah, we got some higher 115s out here. 30s in the bathrooms. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is this is where we start getting into the the other stuff. So some of the this the stuff on this list here, actually the rest of it is not necessary uh, for your initial uh, fire alarm submittal to the HJ. So we won't get into that. Maybe for another video. Um. Let me see if there's anything else I add on here. Those are the basics for, you know, re required by the code. Okay, a nice little touch, your AHJ might want to see it. AHJ might want to see them specifically on here. Hey, here's the AHJ. Some general project notes. Okay, I think I grabbed these from um, from one of the, the chapters in, in NFPA 72. Actually, let me pull it up here. I know if I see the, ch the chapter. Fun, that's right, fundamentals. I grabbed those, I, I just picked some um, some of the notes uh, from from the fundamentals chapter and I added them here for my project information. It's just general notes there. And that's common to have general notes on, on your drawing. Um, if your AHJ wants to see it, you've got you know a nice uh, stamp here. Um, this is just general title block info up here. If you've got revisions as built, um, this is a little spot for the, our PE. Um, this is pretty. This is pretty common. A lot of AHJs. I some AHJs want to see it. Some of them don't because they can get it from other other drawings too, like the architectural set or something like that. But we like to throw this information on here. If it's a sprinkler building, I like to just say yes or no. Then they're not asking asking if it, if it's you know you know smoke detectors all over the place. They're not asking wondering why. You know what I mean. Um, but basically that's it and again this is a typical um, just a, a typical you know fire alarm drawing um, I, again I just wanted to cover the the basics uh, that are required uh, for your for your fire alarm drawing submitted to uh, for approval to the AHJ if you like the video great um, plan on doing some more um, if you need if you're in need of any design help, that's what we do at Fire Pro. Um, we are an outsource uh, design company and we work with uh, designers, or excuse me, fire alarm and electrical contractors all across the United States. Um, so we are very familiar with the design submittal process. Um, we do it all. We do the initial design. We can do um, estimating, put your BOMs together, bill of materials, uh, revisions. By the way, uh, our revisions uh, are included in our design cost. So if there's any revisions by the AHJ, there's no extra charge. Uh, we also do as built. Um, so please contact us uh, if you do need any design. www.fire.com dash pro dot net and thanks again for watching